Hello everyone, welcome back to Cooking with Donna. Today we are making up some catfish. We're going to fry some catfish. Um, I wanted to bring up uh, the giveaways getting closer. If you're not subscribed, please get yourself subscribed. You have to be subscribed in order to enter the giveaway. And it looks like it's going to be a cookware set. Because I've been asking people, you know, what they households are normally looking for. And uh, cookware sets, I have outvoted the rest. So that's looking like that's what it's going to be a nice cookware set so anyway get yourself subscribed so you'll be entered into that giveaway once i hit the 50,000 subscribers okay um here i have a couple of pounds of, of catfish nuggets i cleaned them i patted them dry rinse them off really good that'll help bring them to room temperature and then i patted these dry really really well you want to remove most of that water you can from that catfish that way your batter stays nice and crisp it doesn't release a lot of moisture and you'll end up the end results will be a nice crispy coating on it so only thing I forgot over here is mustard a lot of people like to soak it in uh, buttermilk I don't care for that to me it just browns it too much and it it leaves it more, well, from my experience, that is, it doesn't, um, it just doesn't cook, cook, for me it doesn't, doesn't cook up as good. So I've always stuck with just the mustard and maybe a tablespoon. I would say no more than two tablespoons. Now I'm going in with no salt of the Tony's, but you can skip this. I mean, you're... Your dry spices that are going to go in here is going to have some seasonings. I'm not going to put a whole lot of it, just a little. And just get this all mixed up. You want to get this catfish nice and coated with that mustard. You don't taste the mustard. This just gives something for that cornmeal to stick to. And it adds a, a, some flavor, but not like mustard like you think. And clean hands, guys. Go in there with clean hands. Mustard is something I never really measured. I just word it in there every time I make it. Needs a little more. And then we have just a little bit of that no salt Tony seasoning there. I don't ever pronounce the last name of that stuff because I. Curtis, what is that? Tony, what? I have zero clue. Chacheres? Chachers? Chachers? I don't know. But that's it, guys no salt one because you have some salted stuff that's in here in your cornmeal mix and I got a little over a quart of uh, oil heating up over there bring that up to 350 and I'm gonna get this out of the way bring our cornmeal over here and our flour and we're gonna put our seasonings in here we're gonna stir this up get it all mixed up your seasonings in here that should be good. Let me get my... I have my cooling rack over here and my baking sheet that I set my catfish on as I bread it, just on a cooling rack. You can set it on a plate, but I like to set it there. And what I do is just dredge this. It's nice and moistened from that mustard and just dredge this really good get everything nice and coated set it on that cooling rack and let it set there a good 10 minutes or maybe five minutes you don't got to wait that long got that dredged in the get it nice and dredged press that fish in there but we'll continue doing this and my up uh, my grease over there in my pan is heating up I'm gonna wait for that to hit to 350 Fahrenheit okay guys I have my temp up to 350 now, if you don't have a, a, a candy thermometer, it's usually medium high. You don't want to burn your fish and it not cook. It normally takes anywhere between five to six minutes, just until it's golden brown. But smaller pieces of your catfish nuggets are going to cook quicker, so you'll remove those sooner. Okay, let's go ahead and get this dropped in. See, by having that set there, it gave it time to 
stick to that fish. Now don't overcrowd your, your pan. See, that's a thicker piece. Two, three. And use your high pot. And I'm gonna let those cook just until they're golden brown. And um, we'll get these all fried up. Let them, let them cook a couple of minutes and then you can flip them. So we'll wait for these to cook for a few minutes and we'll give them a flip. Okay guys, this has been in here a few minutes, my first batch. Curtis is like, you didn't show them fl yourself flipping the fish. So, you can flip, you don't really even have to flip it because we're basically deep frying. I just do this just to keep an eye on it, make sure we're not getting too many hot spots on the bottom. But we got one more batch to get in here and it'll be ready to plate up. Look at the air. Okay, these smaller pieces are gonna get done sooner, so remember that. Okay, my friends, there is the finished fried catfish. Uh, husband's waiting to eat. They're gonna dig in off the platter. I just wanted to pres uh, present it to y'all on the platter there so you can see what it looked like. Um, I did use a mix of canola and corn oil. I buy it like that, it's, it's just a mix. I like how that fries. Or you could use some peanut oil even better. Um, and if you have a fresh caught catfish cleaned up, definitely cut that up, make them into some nuggets. I bought mine already like that. Um, or you could buy it in your local butcher, a fresh piece of catfish and cut it up yourself into nuggets. But um, I don't know, for some reason my husband likes the ones that are already cut up and he just likes them like that. But anyway, get yourself subscribed, guys. Um, I want to see everybody that subscribed entered in that giveaway. Everybody get a chance. But um, I guess that's about it. Um, as always, if I ever forget anything, I'll leave it in the description. And all your ingredients you will be needing is in the description. So there it is. You guys have a blessed day. Make you up some catfish. And we'll see y'all next week. Love y'all. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.